Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, 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 Chabarim, shalom. Something interesting happened on the way to the Rastafari Yeshiva, <laughs> so to say. <clears throat> you know, we get intel from ones and ones, give us some intel, and this is going to be on, um, is the Bible a book of liberation or oppression? Yeah. Oppression. Well, as Rastafari, we say down press, right? Down, they ain't pressing us up. Right, picking sense out of the nonsense of even the English language, but the generally speaking. But actually, this is something that's secondary. Okay, let me give ones and ones a background, and then we'll give our brief um, commentary right here, here, here on this. Okay, so on some of the other, you know, platforms, Black Conscious platform, where Bible and Black people and what is, you know. Which one is best for black people, the Bible, or like ancient Egypt, you know, the different reasonments and discussions that go on, right, amongst us as black people, but also now a lot of it gets um, published and gets shared in social media, and there's some ones and ones that we might refer to, and some of y'all know out there in social media, you know, that utilize their platform, you know, for, like the Bible, you know, the good, bad, and ugly, <laughs> but in the reality of it, it's reflecting the the conversations that we're having the questions that we have so is the bible a book of liberation or is the bible a book of oppression right or downpression now something very interesting happened now it's the sonetta platform the house of consciousness i think it was black jesus minister i think a sunday you know one sunday i and i sister wife you know i guess scrolling through you know some of the usual youtube um offerings out there you know different different um, ones and ones that that post you know check it out it's often very interesting you know sometimes i just you know listen and keep it pushing but sometimes there'll be something interesting that comes up so it was black jesus minister black jesus minister he has a thing going on sunday now on the hok house of consciousness on the platform and he has some other ones you know um hebrew or israelites not from the isup not the one west so-called camps you know um one west camps um um Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge or, you know, Cesariac, not those there or some of the other breakaway camps from that 1970, 69 AD. We're not speaking about that, but there's others. I would say more, more of, um, you know, more um, moderate, if we really look at it, more moderate, more balanced. I'll say more balanced, I'll say more moderate, more balanced when we're speaking about we, you know, the black Jews or Hebrews or Israelites who are, happen to be like we, black people, right? So anyway, at first it's Chris Harris, it's Chris Harris. Some say he's an atheist, some say he's this, that, or whatever. We're not saying this, but just to let our audience hear why we're doing this right here and and what the view on this is right because it's going to be very interesting right because the original question was is the bible a book of liberation for black people is the bible like you know either good for black people as a book of liberation or the bible a book of liberation for black people one i think like chris um harris he he wanted to actually have this um debate with ones like tazariak or some of the you know, other ones, I think ISUPK or, or some of these ones and ones have that particular debate with them or maybe the JJ7000. I think he wanted to take that on, but it kind of went back and forth. And what um, Isha Shelley, I and my wife reminded me, she said that it actually, I think Chris, he declined it against one of, um, don't know the brother's name as he called himself, but Malachi is, I think, in his name um, that he brought forward on the Sunday you know, um, Black Jesus Sunday or something like that on the HOK platform. Anyway, that was declined. Now, that would be a very interesting. We had a couple of tastes of what it might be like when it was going back and forth. But, you know, different words are being said. Peanut gallery back and, you know, <laughs> you know how ones and ones do. Anyway, be that as it may. And this will be one of the first podcasts here for what they call a Black History Month, what, 2022. So, the first debate topic was that is the Bible a book of liberation for black people? All right. Now we get to see something posted up recently 
um, Isha Shelley Miste, she let me check it out for a moment. I, I was watching it and listening for a moment as these two, Vocab Malone or Chris Harris versus Mo Vocab Malone. Now, Vocab Malone, he is a, um, I guess like a, a Christian, you know, we could say a white Christian, um, a Calvinist in his particular orientation. He already professed that Calvinist. And I mention this because he, he, he speaks about it, but a lot of ones and ones don't understand the significance and how we can really bring ones and ones to task. But now some things that he has done that we do, you could say appreciate, you know, he's done a lot of research and followed up like on the ISUPK different camps, but he's one who does not um, necessarily believe that we black people are, you know, are of this heritage. So some say he basically goes against, you know, certain points and positions that many black Hebrews, Israelites, also black Jews are across the spectrum. We say across the spectrum, but his main target has been like the ISUPK, you know, those who some some refer to as, you know, those out in the streets, at least. This is how many people know them based on what has been posted up on the YouTube, so forth and so on. But now he's going against this Chris Harris. And the title has changed. And he even said to Anna's sister wife, I said, look at this. You know, Sarnetta, he boasts and he brags of himself that he's a chess master. And occasionally he does some things that I'll say, okay, that's probably what he's talking about right there. How he switched up the title. No doubt because others had declined to debate along the subject line of is the Bible a book of liberation for black people vis-a-vis -vis or against this one named Chris Harris, Chris Harris, right? So now he's debating vocab Malone. So when I started to look at the title, I didn't pick up on that at first. The, the new title is, or the present title is, is the Bible a book of liberation or oppression? I guess that's what they agreed to have the debate on. But previously, <laughs> it was, is the Bible a book of liberation for black people? And Chris Harris would have, I think he wanted to either to Zariak uh, or ISUPK or one of the other, um, one might say loudmouth Israelites or the Israelites that are out there that are pretty known. You know, one of the ones, you know, from one of the known camps out there, but that come on the Sarnenda platform. So Tazariak, for example, you know, might have a first up, you know, that would be a kind of a big debate, you know, many ones will tune in, the ISUPK, you know, Israelite brothers, and then also those who, you know, are against the whole, you could say, either ISUPK or against the Hebrew Israelites. You see, when we say Hebrew Israelites are those of an orientation, not all those who profess to be um, Israelites or Hebrews or black Jews or Yehudi who are black people are ISUPK. So sometimes social media, you know, it kind of distorts things, you know, because what's popular and trending and people don't really know who's who. All right. So that's the first point right there. All right. So the new title is, is the Bible a book of, um, of, of liberation or oppression? Now, on the subject matter of whether the, the Bible is a book of liberation for black people, we would say, in spirit and in truth, yes. Right? In spirit and in truth, we qualify by saying, in spirit and in truth, yes. Right? In, in materiality, what's the opposite of spirit? Right? You know, the natural. The natural, you know, the natural lies, the natural deception, the fallen state. No. Right? Therefore, the new title is the Bible, a book of oppression or liberation or oppression, we would say that, yes, the Bible is both of liberation and the Bible is both of oppression. I know one say, well, 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 well you see, you, you, you're, you're on the fence. No, I'm not on the fence. Right? I'm actually on the offense because it's going to offend some folks, right? The truth about the matter. The Bible is the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's a book of reality. Right? And then when I started to examine, well, who is debating? Well, now we have Vocab Malone versus um, Chris Harris. So I listened to their opening. Right? I listened to their opening. Um, <laughs> you know, I listened to their opening rhetoric, rhetoric. Right? I listened to their opening rhetoric. And almost out at the gate, you know, for example, 
for example, right here. When read in, in deception, when read as a lie, why right? the Bible says it's okay to beat your slave as long as they don't die. This had nothing to do with white people in America right, or chattel slavery. In other words, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant of which, um, what's his name, Vocab Malone, he's representative. Because when he emphasized, even in the 21st century, that he is a Calvinist. Right? Now, the Calvinists were part of the collective of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. It's like today when you say Hebrew Israelites, right? And you have Hebrew Israelites, how can we say this? We mentioned some are more moderate or balanced, right? And you have some who are like, we would say the right, right wing or left wing. Some who are more, you know, liberal as Israelites, some who are more extreme. So amongst us, when I say extreme or fundamentalist, let's say it like that. You have this among the Yehudi, the Jews. You have like the Haredi Jews, you know, Yehudi. They're more the ultra-Orthodox, the Da'ati, the Da'ati, just religious ones who observe certain things. We could say Torah observant. Then you have the Heloni. The Heloni are the secular ones. So when you look at the state of Israel and they have, say, a gay parade or homosexual kind of event in Tel Aviv, some would say, oh, that's what the Jews, the Jews are about that. But this only this, this, the secular ones. Even there, they're being fought back, you know, going back and forth in their own kind of mini civil war with the Haredi, the ultra-Orthodox, and the Da'ati, the Da'ati who are the religious Jews. You know what I'm saying? So even amongst that group, the European Jews, particularly over in the state of Israel, there are different, you could say different, um, I wouldn't just say denominations, but different, almost like classes, so to speak, you know, where, you know, using the terms the moderate you know and then you have like the right right wing and the and the left wing over here they say like you have the conservative right and you have the liberal and then you have the moderate the moderate might see some things that the conservative says that in this situation the conservatives are right the in other words the moderate truly is like the king's position is like the you know like the judge you know, you have your extremes, right? But you seek to come to a balance. But be all that said as it may, the Bible, right? Right here. Um, yeah, the Bible is a book of the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Bible is just a book, right? It, the, the book itself does, the book itself does nothing, right? So when people are now talking about it's the Bible, because hearing Vocab Malone begin off of his perspective, and now I'm thinking about the original, what the original um, debate was supposed to be, whether it's a book of liberation for black people, right? And this also explains why ones like Vocab Malone, why right, is so, you could say, dead set against black people's identification as Hebrews or Israelites in general. He just utilizes, say, one of the more extreme or so-called extreme in their you know, in their point of view, right, in their articulation of the Bible, the ISUPK, as a particular, in those camps, GOCC, he did some very good research connecting the dots of these different, you know, the different camps nowadays that, in a sense, have come from or broken off of what the original Israeli, Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge was about, right? But make no mistake about it, that even though he might expose some things about them, they are like amongst us, like with the Israelis in the state of Israel, where you have your, you know, ultra orthodox, right? And then you have your orthodox, right? You might even have your more moderate, right? And then you have some who are like the neoliberals, you know, like we said about the Heloni, the secular ones. They are the ones who push, you know, a lot of the secular agenda. We use, you know, the gay the gay pride um, march or rally or whatever they had in Jerusalem a little while back because that caught a lot of people's attention. It's like, what? I thought the Jews were about, oh, look, see, though, but they, what they don't understand is that when we're speaking about Vocab Malone, he is a Protestant. So he's going to defend the Bible, but what I think maybe Chris might not hit, Chris is coming from a more, you know, academic neoliberal. Now, the academic neoliberal perspective, you know, viewing the Bible as an ethnocentric document, right? You know, viewing the Bible as a, <laughs> you 
you know, as an ethnocentric document, right? When viewing the Bible as an ethnocentric document, that comes out of what academically is like a neoliberal, right? You know, neoliberal um, education. So in other words, certain secular Jews, some secular Jews, you know what I mean? Like the Heloni we mentioned, the state of Israel, are the ones in many of the universities and schools since the 60s and maybe a little before that, who have brought forward their kind of ideas, even though they're Jewish, they have put forward a lot of, you could say, anti-Orthodox, right, or anti-Torah observant Jewish ideas. Because here in America, you know, that perspective is popular and even the um, many of the liberal white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christians will tolerate it too because you know the white Gentile Christians and the white Jews they have their own interesting um, how can you say civil war their agreement disagreements amongst them uh, many of us as black people are so inured you're like so kind of like 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 um, blind to these kind of real facts and everything anyway not to be long on this, I don't know if I've touched the point that I sought to touch on this, but basically, in this debate here, right, I'm a little hard-pressed to even say this, in this debate here, we kind of think, we're not, we, we'll probably watch it, check it out a little later on, right? but that Chris, Chris Harris, the perspective he's taking and who he is debating, we are not on the side of ones like um, Vocab Malone in this particular argument because of his Protestant right orientation because the protestants make no mistake about it they were part of the general white anglo-saxon you know i mean i mean the calvinists i mean the calvinists the calvinists were part of this whole collective so even among the white anglo-saxon protestant there wasn't just one group right there wasn't just one group like a iu you know isupk you know with the isupk there was this group that group and even you have ones like um abdiel um lewi aka zion lex Right, who might be considered, you know, a black Jew or an Israelite coming from, say, the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, Rabbi Matthews. So we have those. We have the brothers out in Kingdom of Yah, right, over there in Demona in the state of Israel. They are not, you know, Israelites of the same caliber or orientation they're teaching, right, or their doctrine as ISUPK. The thing that we share in common is that we black people over here, especially in the Americas and Caribbean, are those the Bible speaks of in prophecy, right? We're the once lost, now found, black and brown sheep of the house of Israel. That's one thing that kind of ties in many different particular groups. But if we're going to speak about this honestly, the Bible has the good, you know, the Bible has the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? So as we showed even in previous um, vlogs, right, even using this still right here where the Bible was used as a book for oppression or downpression of black and brown people, of lost sheep of the house of Israel. Look at that. The Bible, right, in its translation, the mistranslations was used, and this racist orientation against the very people for whom it originally was. I mean, look at, look at the irony. They said that the Almighty has a sense of humor. You know, you've heard people say that, you know, if you want to make God laugh, you know, you know, tell him about your plans or whatever. But look at the irony right here, 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 that the Bible, right? So in the question of, is the Bible a book of liberation or oppression? The true answer is both. It all depends on who's who. See, that's the key. It depends on who's who. Because we started to scrutinize the particular point concerning Vocab Malone going up against, um, I, I guess, Chris Harris might seem like a, he, he might be, to use the academic, since he's using a lot of academic terminology in his presentation, he'll be like a black neoliberal, in a sense. He mentioned something about he believed in ma'ad, he believed in equity and balance and so forth and so on. And then we saw the opening part of his presentation vis-a-vis -vis comparing that with the opening part of Vocab Malone's. Because Vocab Malone is not going to defend the Bible as a book of liberation for black people because he already disregards that black and brown people are the children of Israel, regardless of all the evidence. He's part of that mentality and that particular mindset. You know what I mean? It's like someone like Black Jesus Minister, right? He goes ham or ham, so to speak, you know, against the ISUPK, you know, and certain other of those um, 
you know, um, Israelites of that particular school. You know, we, we could say they're more of a, not so much a conservative, we might say um, ultra, right? Right. If the basic idea is that we black and brown people who identify with being the children of Israel, this idea goes all the way back to Nat Turner and even before that. Right? It goes back all the way, we could say, to the continent. Right? But actually, over here in the Western world, we could say it goes back to, you know, all the way to the 400 years, the time of Nat Turner and even before. There's various examples of that. And even post-1865 in the Civil War, we have many black communities identifying themselves with being Israelite. Right? And even during that particular time. It's only after the Holocaust where people began to identify the Israelites more as white peoples, especially over here in the Americas. The Israelites. I'm not saying the Jews. I'm saying the Israelites of the Bible. You know, there's a great history that seems to be being rewritten or suppressed about black people's identification with, we could say, the primary characters of the Bible. Now, people can excuse it whatever way they want to excuse it, but the fact remains, right? That's why I said all the way back to Nat Turner, right? Was using the very same tool, so to speak, the Bible, but was using it as a tool of liberation, right? So for black people who identify with being Hebrew or Israelites, yes, the Bible can be used as a tool of liberation. Especially we black people over here in America. I, I cannot speak, generally speaking, for the continent. Because how they are getting the Bible, they're getting the Bible the wrong way. The only exception, perhaps, is Ethiopia concerning the Judeo-Christian heritage. You know, Old Testament, you say Israelite, Beta Israel. And even from Solomon and Sheba, um, the Solomonic dynasty, that particular lineage. That's, that's a whole different history than elsewhere on the continent. But for we over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, yes, the Bible can be, is being, and can be used, right, as a tool of liberation. But the key thing is, because one will say, well, look at all these black Christians, so forth and so on. There were black Christians that identified themselves as Jews, right? And they still, they identify themselves. You'd be surprised what's really going on. But they are more under the same white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, doctrine or, 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 Doctrine and, and what's the word we're seeking? Um, um, derivatives, derivatives of doctrine. You know, that one's like Vocab Malone and his Calvinist orientation professes. All right? So we're not saying necessarily that Vocab Malone is, say, a, a racist, but it's very interesting that the doctrine that he says this Calvinist is all a part of the same general thing, even though the Calvinists may not have been very known for, you know, um, um, uh, down pressing or enslaving black people. And we're asking our researchers to do their research, give thanks to the Chabarim for the research, you know, to do the research on this. So this is kind of like more or less a, a, a opening um, addressing of this subject matter. All right. So, is the Bible um, a book of liberation or oppression? It depends on whose hands it is in and whose mind and, and, and who is the one, you know, bringing the Bible to you. <laughs> you know, because we know that for us as black and brown people, the Bible was used. See, and some of the Israelites might not be able to be honest with this. Now they say, is the Bible... Um, can the Bible use for black liberation? Can the Bible liberate black people? Only within the, we could say, that, that right mind. Only when black people are in their righteous mind. Only when black people identify with the children of Israel can the Bible be used as liberation, right, for black people. The Bible cannot be used as liberation, especially for the ones lost now found uh, for us over here in the Americas and Caribbean after this 400 years being Israelites, it cannot be used for us apart from that knowledge, right? If you ain't, if you ain't woke, so to speak, right? If you're still a sleeper, if it ain't woke, so you, you know, what I mean, this is the fact. This is the fact of the matter. You know, this is the fact of the matter. So I'm gonna leave it right here, but do a little more research on it. But one thing about the Calvinists, uh, from what my own research, maybe I missed something somewhere, and, and the research and others can bring this to our attention. But the Calvinists, what do you know about the Calvinists? I'm talking about historically, right? Historically. I mean, most of those groups, right, were historically racist, 
but they didn't have to own slaves. You see on the statistic that we shared, the statistic says that basically, what's the statistic say? It says that um, 0.35, something like that, 0.35 of white Americans own slaves. But then they messed up because in the other statistic, statistic, they say that 78% right, of, um, you know, percent of the, of the enslaved slave black people over here were owned by so-called Jews. We saw this statistic out there, right? So that means that there's 22, right? If that's 78, there's 22% that wasn't owned by so-called white Jews, right? And then only, um, how many says 40% of the white Jewish population over here in America were even those who even owned, you know, enslaved or slaves or black people. That means that 60% of the Jewish community didn't, right? Yet when we look at those who push for um, the end of slavery or even for, um, you know, abolition, right, in the past or even coming up, say, to the 60s, we find that there were several white Jews, Right? But then when we look at the statistics on the behalf of white Americans, many of them will say that we never, my people never own any slaves. And they are correct with that. But yet the majority of white people in America did not own slaver, slaves, Slavs, black people who are enslaved, yet they tolerated it for over 200 years. You know, 200 plus years, when we look at the real history, some people think it's over the 400 years. And the 400 years is speaking about being under this cracker system, right? Being under, we can say, the cracker, you know, with the Bible in his hand, too. The most confusing of all confusions. Because the thing to test most white folks, right? Black people, Israel, black people, the Jews, that is... That's the point that makes Vocab Malone's jump out the window right there and use this very same Bible to try to deny, right? So when black people get the Bible and say, hey, we identify with the Bible, we're going to use it as liberation, the stumbling block tends to be these other white people that want to claim, say, the book is a book of liberation in a theoretical sense, like Vocab Malone, but yet want to deny the actual sense that the Bible has been used Right to downpress, depress, and so-called quote uh, oppress, you know, people over here in the Americas. I mean, the history is quite clear. And here's the thing about it: we're going to sum up right here. When you look at these verses and errors in the Bible, even these quotes nowadays, we showed it before. What he say, slave, slave, slave. You're going to find a lot of people for the white man lied about all that. He he lied on the he used the Bible, but he twisted it up. Just like an antichrist. What did Christ say? Many shall come in my name. Right? They came in Jesus' name. Right? Brought many of us over here, historically speaking, on uh, ships that were called USS Jesus. You know what I mean? And then he called himself Christ. He painted his picture as Christ. Right? Even the Americans did a picture like Caesar Bogiers over here that he passed out to all the boys in the war. It's the same picture that became popular in, in all of our black uh, grandmama's churches. Right. So and that's and he knows that's a straight up lie. Right. He knows that's a lie because many of us have done research and read many of his books where from previous he was admitting black people as being Israel. So even when the white man knew this, right, he used the Bible. So we can't say that the Bible is not a book of oppression. It is. It is. We have to become very clear with that. Well, I mean, it's a book of oppression. The Bible, as we know it, King James Version, has been used to oppress or downpress black people. But it has been used not as directed. <laughs> you know what I mean? They said, use as directed. The white man is a liar. The historical white man, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Christian, the white man we're speaking about. Right? But think about it. The most of white people in America did not own slaves. Right? That's what they like to say. It was a minority of white people in America that owned slaves. But here's the question for white people. Why did they tolerate it so long? If they were good Christians. See, if the Bible wasn't used to put them in a frozen psychological state. See, this is one thing that many ones like Vocab Malone, you know, well, he doesn't, he doesn't have to address this because um, sadly many of our, our fellow Israelites and, and Hebrews they are still approaching it from the white man's game. You know what I mean? Because on a subject matter like, is the Bible a book of liberation? 
as an Israelite, we say so because we're identifying, right? We're, we're using the book as directed. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, we're using the book as directed. But then even while using that, we might want to side with Vocab Malone in an argument with, against a Chris Harris. Chris Harris, right? He has no other experience of the Bible, historically speaking, than the same common experience that we have. So the, the, the truthful and the honest answer is the Bible has in it the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, it has the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Bible historically had, or the scriptures, should we say, even before the King James, was used for liberation. Now people go back to the old narrative of Canaan, but they don't even know half of what was going on. You know, it's almost like, suppose you just wake up one day and, oh, I send you in the past and you wake up in, in the time of the, the enslavement of black people and you see black people running around killing white people and, and killing little children in their bed and everything. You'll wake up at that point and say, oh my God, right? You'll be like, oh my God, right? You know, because you say, how could they be doing this? They're killing little babies and just people, innocent people. But what you don't know is that that's a slave revolt. Something else happened prior to that. You know, something happened prior to that. You know what I mean? You see somebody walk down the street, you see somebody just knock somebody down or beat somebody. You say, oh my God, they're beating up this man. But then it might come out that this person is a, for example, a pedophile, right? Or just has raped some woman, right? Or molested some woman or hurt, you know, abused some old person or robbed them or something like that, right? And then some of you are so hypocritical, you'll say, well, even if they did that, that's no reason to do that. See, y'all are the ones not dealing with reality. The Bible deals with reality. And being real with the Bible, the Bible has been used for both liberation and, historically speaking, especially with the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and inclusive of that was the Calvinist, you know, was Vocab Malone's, you could say, his doctrinal philosophy. And it's about time that these ones come to confront that and to admit that truth. But I don't think he will because that has been a part of a 400 year game, you know? And until we get up on it, they ain't gonna get off it. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. This is Yad and Ras Ayadonis Tafari, L-O-J. The line of Jewish society was Matsy. Check out the description, L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom.